Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ said. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high. And on earth peace, good will towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee, we give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Do not let thy church close its eyes, O Lord, to the plight of the poor and neglected, the homeless and destitute, the old and the sick, the lonely and those who have none to care for them. Give us the vision and compassion with which thou didst so richly endow thy servant, William Augustus Muhlenberg that we may labor tirelessly to heal those who are broken in body or spirit, and to turn their sorrow into joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. reading from the letter of James. Blessed is anyone who endures temptation. Such a one has stood the test and will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. No one, when tempted, should say, I am being tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, and he himself tempts no one. But one is tempted by one's own desire, being lured and enticed by it. Then, when that desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and that sin, when it is fully grown, gives birth to death. Do not be deceived, my beloved. Every generous act of giving with every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. In fulfillment of his own purpose, he gave us birth by the word of truth, so that we would become a kind of first fruits of his creatures. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 133, found on page 787 in the Book of Common Prayer. Psalm 133. We will recite it in unison. Oh, how good and pleasant it is when and brethren live together in unity. It is like fine oil upon the head that runs down upon the beard, upon the beard of Aaron, and runs down upon the collar of his robe. It is like the dew of Hermon that falls upon the hills of Zion, for there the Lord has ordained the blessing, life forevermore.
Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Then Jesus entered the temple and drove out all who were selling and buying in the temple. And he overturned the table, tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold doves. He said to them, It is written, My house shall be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of robbers. The blind and the lame came to him in the temple, and he cured them. But when the chief priests and the scribes saw the amazing things that he did, and heard the children crying out in the temple, Hosanna to the son of David, they became angry and said to him, Do you hear what these are saying? Jesus said to them, Yes. Have you never read, out of the mouths of infants and nursing babies, you have prepared praise for yourself? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, praise to you, to thee, O Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So, uh, today we celebrate the feast of William Augustus Muhlenberg, who happens to be my favorite saint. I don't know if we're supposed to have favorite saints, but he is by far my favorite. Um, and he's kind of an overlooked saint in some ways. I don't think we've recognized as the Episcopal Church just how much he has impacted uh, our, our church today, especially our prayer book. Um, if you've ever been grateful that you didn't have to pay for a pew in church, you can thank Muhlenberg. If you've been grateful that we have more than 26 hymns to choose from, you can also thank him. Or if you've been grateful for Episcopal schools and the wonderful education they provide uh, to millions of children throughout their uh, their times, then you can also thank William Augustus Muhlenberg. When I see the timeline of all of the many, many things that he did in his ministry, um, I first just wonder how he did it and managed to survive and not collapse because he was an intensely productive man. Um, one of my favorite things about him is that he called himself an evangelical Catholic. And so at a time, I know, it's, it's, <laughs> it's surprising. It was surprising to me too. Um, he had this periodical that he called the Evangelical Catholic. And this was at a time, actually similar to if you, um, if you heard about our saint yesterday, George Selwyn, a time when the church was in a state of turmoil over the ritualist controversy and people who, um, who wanted to do things like bring back flowers and candles into the church and vestments um, and celebrate communion, celebrate the Eucharist more than once a month. These were considered, uh, you know, evidence of being a secret papist, um, and it was very, very controversial in the church. And so Muhlenberg said, we don't actually have to pick and choose sides. There are no sides in God's kingdom. We can, we can honor um, the preferences and the needs of people, meet people's needs in a variety of ways. And actually, this is good. Our unity can be found in the fact that we love Jesus. And that's okay that we have some differences. And so he called himself an evangelical Catholic because he loved the tradition, the aesthetics of the Catholic tradition, the rich use of um, of liturgy and music he thought was all uh, particularly beautiful and also was catechetical, that had a role to teach um, people about what the kingdom of God looked like and sounded like and felt like. Um, and, but he also wanted flexibility. He wanted to be able to pray for people without always needing to use a scripted prayer from the Book of Common Prayer. And at that time, they were very limited. He wanted to write hymns and have music that spoke to people in a different way that you know, encouraged them and comforted them and excited them. And so he, he did many of these things. But what I think made him so successful and made people flock to his churches, um, he was born in Philadelphia, by the way, and served at Christ Church, briefly, Old Christ Church. 
But what made people come to him was that he lived out the gospel outside of church with authenticity. He, um, he was very, very concerned about the plight of the poor, and particularly people who would claim to care about the poor on Sundays and pass them by in the streets without a second glance. And so in his churches, he actively sought out people from different social stratas and wanted to blend uh, the, the people in his churches so that they really got to know one another and could really teach each other and encourage one another. He did things like um, organizing a fund to take children who had never been outside of the city to the country so that they could you know, see real animals and grass, and he called it the Fresh Air Fund. Um, and he was, so it's just a remarkable man. He also had a confidant named Anne Ayers who started, um, uh, not a, a, so a sisterhood, I would call it. It was not a convent, they did not live together, but started um, a, an organization that carried out some of these charitable works and advocated for a life of, of prayer. And again, authenticity of, of living out the good news in their life. So that is why Muhlenberg is my favorite saint. Uh, I encourage you to learn more about him. Um, he was prolific in his lifetime, but he also must have had a mysterious side because he requested after his death that all of his uh, letters be burned. So we don't have that many of his, his actual letters, but thankfully Anne Ayers compiled many things before his death. So there's a great biography that you can read that Anne Ayers put together for us. So an inspirational saint, a true man of God, and I think worthy of being on our calendar and of our um, emulation. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church and the world. Almighty and ever-living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications, and to give thanks for all men, receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, and Daniel, our bishop, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence, they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. We beseech thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, especially Joe, our president, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works that rejoicing in thy whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. Remembering especially those on our parish prayer list, Chris, George, Daniel, Mary Jane, Will, Nick, Marlene, Will, Doug, Bob, Barbara, Adam, and Howard. 
We pray also for an end to gun violence and all of those who have been affected by gun violence in our city these past few days. We pray for all those who are suffering from addiction, from mental illness, and the effects of poverty. That God may send faithful workers uh, to alleviate their struggles, to be with them in their sorrows, and to bring them the light of the good news. We also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to grant us grace so to follow the good examples of the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, blessed Mark the Evangelist, blessed William Muhlenberg, and all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most seriously have committed by God, word, and deed, against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life. To the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And, and with thy spirit. Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving, and make good your vows unto the Most High. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. Pray, brothers.
brothers and sisters, that this, my sacrifice and yours, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord receive the sacrifice of my hands for the praise and glory of his name, both for our benefit and that of all his holy church. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounded duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, because thou art greatly glorified in the assembly of thy saints. All thy creatures praise thee, and thy faithful servants bless thee, confessing before the rulers of this world the great name of thine only Son. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, for that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, for the remembrance of me. of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. We, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make. Having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee, 
that we and all others who shall be partakers of this Holy Communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ our Lord. By whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him that takest away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed.
Almighty and ever living God, we Who most heartily thank thee for that thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members incorporate the mystical body of thy Son the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship, and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. I'd like to invite all those who would like to stay for prayers of healing to come forward to the altar rail at this time. giver of life and health, comfort and relieve your servants, and give your power of healing to those who minister to their needs, that they may be strengthened in their weakness, and have confidence in your loving care, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Savior of the world, by thy cross and precious blood, thou hast redeemed the world. Save us and help us, we humbly beseech you, O Lord. Again, as our Lord has taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Let us pray. The Almighty Lord, who is a strong tower to all who put their trust in him, to whom all things in heaven, on earth, and under the earth bow and obey, be now and evermore your defense, and make you know and feel that the only name under heaven given for help and salvation is the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.